and all the rejection of God that I did. Now this is this is an exaggeration. It was like stabbing them in the heart because they would weep when they would see the things that I did. And like, I just met these, these were my best friends in my life. These are the people that really loved me, Who was really weeping? loved me. And, and I'm we're watching my life review and I'm stabbing them in the heart and causing them great grief. Today we are blessed to have Howard Storm being part of the end time prophecy. And he's more than a minister with great truth. He's a friend, he's a brother, and it's real. And Howard's given us this interview, and we're going to talk more detail about his NDE experiences. And many of you may not know what that means. It means near-death experience. And it was a real event that happened in Howard's life. Many of you know and heard his story. But get more detail. Howard, first of all, I just want to introduce yourself and uh, then we'll just talk a little bit and get some things for end time prophecy, okay? All right. I just turned 77 years old. And when I was a kid, like I think many people experienced, we were taken to church. My parents didn't always go to church. Matter of fact, a lot of times they dropped me and my sisters off, but we went to Sunday school. And I love Sunday school because it was mostly either story time or arts and crafts. And of course, you know, I mean, how fun is that? Um, yeah. And then at the end of uh, our Sunday school class, we'd go into a little chapel and we'd have like a little simple service and pray and wow. things like that. And I, I, was, I was really into it when I was 12 years old. I asked my parents if I had been baptized, and they said, no, we, we never did that. And I said, well, I need to get baptized right away. So um, I think it was a week later, I got I got baptized by the pastor down wow. in, uh, in the church, and that was very meaningful to me. So then um, I got this notion that I was going to go into ministry, Christian ministry. Even as a young guy? Yeah, 12 years old. And, uh, and then when I was 15, I went to my pastor and we were really good friends and I said, I just got some questions I need answers to because, you know, I'm taking this stuff really seriously. Yes. And I said, he was from Har he was he had his uh, divinity degree from Harvard, Harvard wow. Divinity. Yeah. That, that was the big God is dead movement thing. Yeah. That was in Time yeah. Magazine. Anyways, I said, so um, do we believe angels are really? He said, no, no, we don't believe that stuff that's that's all wow. that's all just stories and I said wow. and and so I asked him all these questions about the supernatural things yeah you know and he just oh no 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 we don't believe that and basically what he was trying to tell me we believe that you should be good yeah. you know I mean he wasn't too sure about heaven or hell or anything yeah and Why? I didn't question anything he said because he was the authority. He's my minister, he's the authority. I mean, like, what do we really believe? Wow. And I came away from that. Well, it's it's all a big lie. It's all it's all a big hoax. It's right, all he didn't scam. believe and he's the He didn't believe anything. Wow. So um, I walked away from the church. I never went back, never went to church again until decades later. Isn't that amazing, just little statements that said, and you, from God being great and listening to a minister, you didn't think much about God when you walked away to listen to the minister say that. Wow. Yeah, he, he, he turned me away from the whole thing, and um, he was a nice guy, and um, we were close. I mean, we were, you know, I was just kind of like his special wow. protege, you know, kid. 15-year-old kid that says he wants to be a minister. Yeah, wow. Um, anyhow, so I started re reading uh, different philosophies and got really excited about existentialism, which is there's mm -hmm. no God in that. And, uh, 
I just became an atheist when I went to college at the age of 17. I took philosophy 101 and Professor Dickens was my, and we became really close and he was a real atheist left wing guy and he and I used to go um, out to the bars and drink until two o'clock in the morning and talk about stuff and, and he convinced me that the, the, the way to go was no God, you know, just live your life to, you know, get what you can get out of it. Yeah, just live your life. Wow. So that's what I did. Um, I became a totally self-absorbed egotist. Wow. Um, and it's very, very good strategy. I mean, if you want to get, get ahead in this world, become an egotist. Become completely selfish and self-absorbed and don't care about anybody else. Self-absorbed. By know? the way, Howard was also a professor. He's a yeah. professional artist. And um, it's just amazing. I know, Howard, uh, people that attend the church I'm at, this lady came to me and said, I heard you bring in Howard Storm in. I said, yes. And she said, he was every bit as against God as anybody you've seen, not just somebody that, that didn't care. I mean, you were against God. Yeah. And that's where you were brought well, up. Well, I made, made, made fun of Christians all the time, openly. Yeah. Then people say, was well, that stuff really happen? At uh, end of year, of course it does. You do enough research and study. And this movie, After Death, that's coming out, Howard had the opportunity to be part of it, but it's going to have scientists on there to back up their testimony. So these are some great things where Howard's come from. As an educated professor, uh, an artist, and then I believe most of you know the story. God's Bible College for Howard was not one that you really want to go through. It was a <laughs> near-death experience. But Howard later goes to college, Bible College becomes a pastor. But Howard, the foundation that you, where you're at and what God's brought in your life. You did a wonderful job sharing in our church this the wonderful yet very tough things you've gone through physically and spiritually, but you had the opportunity in this near-death experience. Uh, how long did that last that you were did you have one time or different events that you went in and out this near death experience? No, no, it was one thing, and um, there's there's no time in it. But when people ask me how long it lasts, I said longer than uh, the time that I spent in graduate school, which was three years. Wow, it seems even longer than human time. Oh yeah, yeah. Wow, did you actually uh, you you had the opportunity? Angels in your presence. You know the Bible says that. <clears throat> Treat strangers decent because you don't know you may be entertaining angels yeah. on a word. Yeah. Well, Howard, he went into the spirit world and he met angels. Did you yeah. ever, did they ever give you their names and how big were they? Did they communicate in English or was it the thought process? No, no, they, they communicated in English, but I never asked the names. So actually, I didn't want to, there was a lot of stuff I didn't want to know. Because they asked yeah. me if I wanted to see family members who had passed, and I said, no, no, no. And you know why I didn't want to see them? It was because I knew that a whole bunch of them weren't in heaven. Oh, and wow. I was afraid if I saw the ones that were there, then I would know who hadn't made it. And I, I just didn't wow. want to know that. And with, with, and with the angels, because the angel, we all have a team of angels. You don't have a guardian angel. So that's not true. We all have a team of angels. A whole wow. group of angels, and That's they've been with me all my life, and um, I've given them a hard time because their their angels have one purpose, which is to serve God's will yeah. and bring us to God. Yeah. And they try and try and try, and you know, um, a song would I'd be driving, and a song would come on the radio about heaven and God and stuff like that, and about ah, right. nonsense, you know, silly stuff, or you know. I had I had students that were strong Christians that would try and testify to me, and I'd laugh at them and wow. tell them, "Well, it's nice you believe in those stories. I don't, you know. I mean, just blow them off." So this near-death experience. I know you dealt with the demonic world and yeah. God's world, but were you aware 
of your past life when you're in this near-death experience? Did you realize oh, you Oh, they did a life review in detail, chronologically, my whole life, and it was awful. Oh, because wow. I'm in the presence of Jesus and the angels, and all the rejection of God that I did. Now, this is, this is an exaggeration. It was like stabbing them in the heart, because they would weep when they would see the things that I did. And like... I just met these. These were my best friends in my life. These were the people that really loved me, Who was really weird? loved me. And and I'm we're watching my life review, and I'm stabbing them in the heart and causing them great grief. And I kept saying, "Okay, we don't want to watch this. We don't want." To. And Jesus said to me many times, "Watch it. You need to watch this. You need to. You need to see what you did." Wow. So you it didn't, was tough. God was just right up showing you your life review. Yeah. How you been? Yeah. And you sounds like to me, since you were not a Christian and an atheist, there wasn't much good things that we would consider good that you know. And you knew that. There wasn't oh. there wasn't any real compassion for the people. It was all about me. Oh man, God help us. You know? Yeah. Wow. What can you do for me? Wow. Well, going through that, that must have just Coming out of it, I don't know how you responded, but you must have just been, wow. I was devastated. But the good thing was, is that Jesus always let me know that he loved me. He hated, hated the things that I did with my life, but he loved me. And I mean, I, I can only compare it to like a, being a grandparent, which I am. Yeah. You know, your kids, your grandkids could be naughty and break things and, you know, jump and scream and yell, and you still love them, you know. I can relate to that. You still love them, even though they do silly things. Yeah. And God's agape love. You knew God still loved you, even though the review, yeah. you saw a wasted life. Yeah. Now, the world wouldn't consider it wasted. Much of the world. No, because I was a big success. Yeah. I mean, I mean by worldly standards. Yeah. yeah. You're living your life. You're a professor. You're, 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 a, I've looked at enough. You are a, Top artists, I can yeah. see that. Uh, but you know, talking to you, I didn't know you before, but the people who came to me said, you know, listen, this is a real deal because Howard was anti-God yeah. and not just didn't believe, but I heard there's Christians in your class, you give them a rough time. I did. Yeah. But Because uh, I thought it was my job to knock that silly stuff out of their head. Wow. What did God use? Because right now it's very apparent. Book of Romans 5 says, let the love of God be shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Spirit. Agape is flowing and it wasn't flowing before. Yeah. What do you contribute that God did to allow your heart to be to the point that you have? You speak from a broken heart, a yeah. broken man. Yeah. Well, in AA, they... It's sort of a universal thing is nobody's going to achieve sobriety until they hit the gutter. I, w I went down in the gutter of the universe. The bottom. Yeah. You know, you mentioned you felt uh, you're in your inward man, and we know the body, soul, and spirit, you're out of your body, but when the demonic activity was going on, you actually were able to feel pain without your Oh, yeah. Body. It, it was just as painful as if it was this world. You know, I'm not saying this for Howard. He may not want to say anything, but I got a sense from his heart talking to Howard in the past and listening to his testimony that these uh, demonic world, they weren't just slapping him, calling him names. No. They seemed to be along the perhaps molesting, toying with you sexually. Maybe yep. I'm out of line with that. No, no, I'm not so. So and I, I, you think about that. A lot of stuff's going on in the world. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. It very well could be promoted by demonic, demonic powers because right. that kind of stuff was happening to you without you being mean. They were just yeah. uh, trying to punish you. Yeah. And you felt the pain as if you had your physical body. They were yeah. just giving me what I'd put out into the world. Now, I hadn't done the horrible wow. things that they had done, but they wanted me to experience the pain that I inflicted because, like, when you hurt people, you have no idea how much it may hurt them and hurt them like for the rest of their life, traumatize them. Wow. You catch that? You're right. It could change a person's life. 
Like Let's, that pastor did to me. That, a pastor did that, and you walked out of that room, and all of a sudden your, your respect for God had... Zero. Yeah. Because you're young, you're impressionable, and this guy basically had no faith in the living God. Yeah. And you wonder why is he pastoring? Yeah. And you went the other because way. Because it, it was a career. He's making a living. Mm. Wow. With all of his Harvard education. Yeah. I just spent uh, six weeks in the hospital. And um, in the early part of that time, I was very close to death uh, for several days. And ultimately, um, they amputated my leg because uh, um, an aneurysm had blocked the blood flow and, the, and all the tissue had died. Um, a lot of pain. And I don't mean this metaphorically. I mean this really. I knew I was walking on the edge of a chasm. And the, the chasm had all the things that my animal self craved. Anger, self-pity, depression, revenge, you know. Um, it's all crowding in. Yeah, yeah. Um, particularly anger at God for, you know, I mean like, why me, why, why is this happening to me? You know, I mean, that, that chasm had all that stuff and I'm right on the edge of that chasm. And the only thing that kept me from falling in that chasm was like, God, I'm sticking with you. You're my hope, you're my faith. You're gonna get me through this. You're good and I don't know why this is happening, but it has a good purpose. And I will, I'll know what my purpose is in time, why this went on and I'm gonna have a life, you know, and you are all I got and I'm not going down that hole. I'm not going falling into that hole. Did this happen and, in your recent amputation or? No, it, 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 right, at the, right at the beginning and the pain was terrible. Wow. You know, and the doctors said, what's your pain like? And I said, 10. You know, on the, you know, the scale one to 10, like 10, you know. Anyways, um, I, instead of going down that hole, I became the biggest comedian and jokester in that hospital. And the nurses and the orderlies and the cleaning ladies, they all told me that they loved coming. They used to come to my room for no reason because I always had a joke and I always was like laughing and telling stories. Right. Now, I was not feeling good, you know, I'm like having pain and I'm like miserable and, um, and they said they so much appreciated me trying to be funny because they knew I was trying to be funny. And they knew you Because there's so understand. many people in the hospital are mean to them and, yeah. you know, have negative attitudes and are ugly. I mean, I act ugly and mean and, I tried to be Mr. Cheerful and Mr. Crazy Guy. I did crazy, you can ask me, wow, I did all kinds of crazy stuff to make people laugh. You're a blessing to them, you know. The Bible says, better to enter heaven lamed in hell hole. And here you come through the near-death experience and he didn't get an exemption ticket for suffering. Howard, he's gone through what Jesus said, the baptism of suffering, it's not yeah. the water baptism. Yeah. And uh, and still you're going through things. Yeah. But when I mentioned Howard, when I came to see Howard today, I said under church as a young man, that good young man, it, just a good young man, he went home. And I was telling him about the parents were trying to keep it together. Howard said, that young man, I envy him. It just hit me. You envy him because he's in the presence of God. And yeah. Precious in the sight of the Lord. Amen. Amen. By the death Amen. of his saints. You'd rather go home. Yeah, I want to go home. And Howard, this near death experience is no doubt it changed your life, but it wasn't a free ticket. You've had to be discipled. You've had to surrender areas of your life. You've had to grow through this, yeah. even though you went through it. Yeah. You, you, you paid some baptism of suffering. But also, what we know by faith, and we base it on God's truth, we believe it. Why God gives glimpses to some people or not for their benefit. This yeah. baptism of suffering is God's way for our benefit. Yeah. That we might just catch a, a glimpse of eternity. Yeah. And I can tell when you talk, certain things trigger uh, tears from the Holy Spirit 
and one is definitely agape love. You know you've been in the presence where God is love yeah. and it's saturated. And that's why death has no power over us. Right. Pain. That's right. We got to keep the eternal focus. Then the, the Bible tells us, uh, keep your eyes on eternity, not just in this world. Set your affection on things above. It's as yeah. real right now. And how you could probably express stepping out of your body. It's that simple. Yeah. Your being steps out, and you probably felt no pain in the body when you stepped out. Yeah. It was there. Yeah. But you felt much alive. How did you feel? More you, alive. More, wait, wait. More alive than when you were alive in the body. Oh, yeah. My spiritual body is more alive than this body. This body's like holding me back. <laughs> That's, you, you're ready to roll when you came out yeah. of your body. You're yeah. like, I'm free or something. Huh? Yeah. Uh, but other people cannot see you or recognize you. No. Right? And from what you were saying, too, you can't just go and grab somebody. They I can't. tried. No, it didn't do any good. <laughs> oh, so when you stepped out and you tried, it, it's yeah. just the, the uh, what would you call it? Dimensions don't match, right? You can't Right, just exactly. That. And they don't know you're there. They, you could yell, yeah. they can't hear you? No. Can, but you could hear them. Oh, yeah. That's really powerful. Yeah. Well, uh, I just, to talk about that, it's just, just to try to grasp what eternity is about. When you die, it's not like you're in the grave, life's over. You're still alive. Do you know how long, I mean, it's hard to say. The Bible said, be absent from the body, be present to the Lord. Uh, but I've heard sometimes people who actually brought back to life there may be some lingering. And could that even be possible with someone who doesn't come back in their body? Yeah. There may be some lingering time before they're in the presence of the Lord. Or oh, yeah. And, but the, the best death is if you really believe in Jesus, really believe in God, same thing. Yeah. He's going to come right away and take you to heaven. That quick. I mean, just just now. But if you are ambivalent and have other desires, um, you may hang around for a while. Wow. And You're the not bad ready. thing like is, the demons, the demons are ready to pick you off because oh wow, Satan's whole hope is to turn people away from God. You know. You know, atheists say, uh, I, I, I don't believe in God. And you know what I, a um, Baptist pastor friend of mine said to me when everybody has a God, the only question is, who's your God? Some right. people, Satan's their God. Some people, you know, Jesus is their God. You know. Yeah. Well, you say when you, if you've got some issues, it may, may not be as quick because now right. you're saying that, you got sidelined by some demonic spirits. Yeah. Because you were still struggling with things. Yeah. And you were sidelined. Yeah. What do you think kept you out of going into hell? Because you remember- I went into hell. You went actually into hell. Yeah. I was in hell. And I, I just want people to know that- Yeah, descend into hell. Um, there's all these uh, made up um, things about hell. Hell is torment. Hell is worse than anybody can possibly imagine. And one of the things that makes hell really awful, really terminal, there's no hope in hell. When people go to hell, they know this is it. What's the closest thing you saw to communication or fellowship in hell with people or angels? Was it just total? Hell, hell is everybody is trying to dominate everybody else and they, they do that with um, physical brutality. It's just one big gang fight. The part of hell that I saw, and there's a lot more hell than I saw, but the part I was in is just one big massive gang fight about trying and to- And you're be... feeling the pain and rejection oh, yeah. and everything. Yeah. Wow. Did you see anybody you know in hell? No. But you just were able to give a tour and But see I do them. want to say, people in hell were my my brothers and sisters not literally 
I felt very much one with the people in hell, even when they turned on me, um, because I, I had the same attitude and mentality that they did. When I started praying to God, they became so angry and said horrible things to me. And because me. you're praying to God, yeah. and I remember you called out the name Jesus. You didn't yeah. know very much, no. but that little Sunday school helped I you. Went, I went Jesus. back to Sunday school and Jesus loves me, this I know for the... I went back to that. Yes. I, I remembered that. And when I remembered that, my heart was like, I used to know that. That, that, that used to be who I was. And I said, you know, Jesus, please save me. He's in name above all names. And yeah. we must be reminded then, they overcome the devil by the word of our testimony, but by the blood of the Lamb, Jesus. This power, this power Just in the name. name Jesus. Powerful. Remember that, because you'll be struggling at times. We all do yeah. in this world. But you just simply called out the name Jesus. Yeah. And you felt instant the grace of God coming to your head. Right. Why well, you did it, not out of cursing, you did it out of hope. Yeah. It makes a difference. And God did bring you to the bottom of yourself. I've heard your testimony. Yeah. And I mean, you are right there. At that point, you didn't know if you were coming back, did you? No. No. I wanted to go to heaven. And God just wouldn't let you. Yeah. Did you catch that? He wanted to go to heaven, but how did God impress you that, no, he's not going to let you in now? Um, I told you this flat out. I said, okay, I'm ready to go to heaven. I want to go to heaven now. And he said, you don't have a character. You won't, you don't fit in. You're not, you're not ready to go to heaven. You wouldn't, you wouldn't, you don't belong there. You got to go back and wow. you got to start living what I've been telling you about. And, um, we talked about a lot of things, wow. but I, I'll say one word that is kindness. Just being a kind human being, caring about other people. You know, um, Jesus' big word to me was, love the person that you're with. And I'm like, I had no idea. You know what? I've been doing this for almost 40 years now since my experience, and I'm still trying to learn what it means to love the person you're with. Because sometimes, loving the person you're with is calling the police and having them arrested. Wow. I mean, that's tough love. Real, that's real agape, other center. Not yeah, and sometimes agape. loving a person is um, having them uh, committed to the hospital. Sometimes loving a person is telling them what they're doing is flat out wrong and they need to stop it, you know? Yeah, yeah. But mostly loving a person is listening to them, caring about them, and seeing if there's any way that um, you can um, help and need, yeah. you know, give them some guidance. Like, we can't fix anybody, we can't change anybody, but we can help people. We can help people change themselves. Well, you said a lot of loving's not throwing money at people. It's no. not making them feel good. When Jesus talked about love, it is that other centered and yeah. it's not always popular yeah. if you're really concerned. Um, Howard, when you're in the presence of the Lord, I know you had this terrible time that the demons were dragging you to hell. And you come out of that. That happened first, right? Then yeah. you had the heaven experience. Yeah. And when you glanced around, uh, you said you got a tour. Did the, the Lord himself take you through a yeah. tour of heaven? Yeah, yeah. On that tour, what were you, What if you can bring to focus, what were you seeing? when the Lord's showing you. And do you but think heaven, you're actually in the presence of heaven? Everything in heaven is so beautiful, and I, I don't want this to sound, but everything in heaven is filled with the Spirit of God. The, heaven exists because of God. It, God's love is the energy and the substance of what heaven's all about. So in a sense, everything is alive in heaven with God's love. And I don't mean like everything's animated and dancing around, but every, you know, every, I mean, when you see the flowers and the trees and the grass and the ocean and stuff like that, you just know that everything is filled with God's love because it's all actually made out of God's love. As, as, and this is hard to believe, but we're made out of God's love. We're a yeah. part of God's love. Well, God is love. Yeah. He made us. 
did you, it's almost sensing like a liquid agape love that's saturated. Oh, absolutely. And no absolutely. envy. And what about marriage? I know Jesus said we'll not be married in heaven, uh, but there's got to be close relationships. Uh, and let me just, just straightforward here. Uh, did you get any sense that there's sex drive or is it just no, true agape? No, is no. that a, a fleshly know, thing? There's, there's no sex in heaven because the love of the relationships that we have in heaven is more intimate and more powerful than what we experience sexually. Um, so we're not going to miss anything. We're, no, we're going to. We, we are going to fall in love over and over and That's over that. again. And when I mean in love, I mean like crazy love, like we've never known in this world. I know a man that right now is, is on his deathbed and he had a desire to get married again. We talked about it, prayed about it. But when he enters heaven, he'll be full. No. He'll be full. He won't be some, oh no, I missed this. No. He'll be full. Or the young man that died the other day, 21. He'll be complete. Yeah. And what do you think that void is filled with? It sounds like this agape love that just draws and fills us. Yeah, I can hardly talk about the love that I experienced in heaven because I, it's, there are no words adequate to describe it. And I've talked to lot, wow. lots of people that have had near-death experiences. And when we get together, it's like, oh there aren't any words. We can't, there's no way to talk about how great this love is. It's like never ending. You don't yeah. want to get a finish line. Is that what you sense? It's just. Yeah ongoing and there's a fellowship i know the fellowship's sweet with the lord did you get uh i know you're with the angels was there really that um intimate fellowship and love for each other besides saturated did you sense love by the angels or love by other people oh, i know you were with god absolutely but um I highly respect my angels and I thank them, but they are a lower order of being than us humans. Right. We're going to be higher than the angels. And yes. the reason is, is that angels have one motivation and that is to serve God. Whereas we have been given the gift of free will, which gets us in a lot of trouble. But Boy. the good news is yeah. Yeah. that when we make an error, if you uh, look at your error, if you're honest with yourself, you look at that error and you confess that error, which means you really, you know, you speak it out to God. Like what I did was I was so wrong. And then repent from that error, which means literally to turn from that error. I'm not going to do that again. I am never going to be that way again. I'm never going to speak to someone that way again. And you know, I'm going to try not to, <laughs> right. whatever, um, and say, God, I know you forgive me. You know, the, the forgiveness happened 2,000 years ago. Christ. All you've got to do is acknowledge it. We've, we, all of our sins are forgiven when we acknowledge them and repent from them, and we acknowledge that we have been forgiven. When Jesus suffered and died on that cross, it was not for nothing. It was the most important day in the history of humankind, the most important Lord day in the God. history of the world, and don't you ever forget it. Praise God. Did you sense the temptation of sin in heaven? No. Is I'm asking, saying, you can't, you, you saying can't. theologically, you can't. If you got the divine nature like Jesus, yeah, it's not that you, it's just not there, right? I mean, you just in the presence of God, it just wasn't a possibility. No, the love, the love is so strong that 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 desire. No, just, in the end, this guy has a better job, more money. That's all gone, right? You just. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, I was talking to Alex, and Alex, uh, he's on the other side of this camera. We talked about there'll be leisure time, and Alex said, he'll have a lot of things to do in heaven. Whatever you whatever you want to do. I mean, if if you want to tinker around and make a boat, you know, carve a boat, go ahead, you know, go ahead. 
Oh, that's, that's if that floats your boat, go ahead. <laughs> that floats your boat, you can do it. And yet there's structure, and we'll probably have times beyond just worship in spirit and truth that uh, we can meet and gather for worship. I'm sure, oh, I don't know if we're around any singing oh, yeah. or anything, or anything. Did you get around any singing? or? Worship? Oh, yeah, the people are worshiping all the time, but the ultimate worship is what is called the heavenly choir, but it's not a... Um, it's a gathering of billions and billions of souls oh, around wow. God, and they're praising God. And God, God, God is the composer, but they're the instruments, and each of us bring our own instrument. So some people are um, high. I mean, I never are, could play an instrument, but they're in heaven. Yeah, but we, they I don't mean, have instrument. We we're the instrument, within. and some sing low and some sing higher, but they're all in the choir, you know. That is beautiful. Yeah. So you got to witness some of that. Oh yeah. And worship. And that's the that's the ultimate thing. But nobody goes near God until they're pure. You know, my wife sometimes said to me, "Howard, you know her," and she said, "I just don't understand sometimes that people are just scared to express an amen or yeah. the Bible says lift holy hands. Yeah. How are we going to feel as believers when we enter into our eternal home?" We can't just sit there and be entertained. It's got, you said the instrument's kind of, it's got, we're going to worship within us the Lord. Oh, absolutely. If we're not just going to be able to sit there and just think we're being entertained. You saw real worship of the God oh, of yeah. heaven. I mean, that church is not heaven, but it's the most beautiful training in the world for heaven. For heaven. I did into heaven, but I got a tour of heaven as a tourist. You know, wow. as an outsider, but anyways, yeah. um, everybody gets to do exactly what they need. Like, for example, if you have had a hectic life and you just want to sit by a lake or by an ocean and just relax, you can do that for as long as you want. Like, I want, my hero is St. Paul. I adore the man and I, yes. I think he's the greatest human being that ever lived in my opinion. If you read what he went it's through and what he did that. with his life, right. he's yeah. he's the greatest man that ever lived. But anyways, I want to, um, when I get to heaven, um, after I greet my family and all that, I'm going to say, oh, can I can I see St. Paul now? Because I got a lot of questions. Because I want to know, like, his courage, his perseverance, what he went through. I mean, I, I avoid persecution. I avoid trouble. I avoid... I think we all... You know, I mean... It head on. And he, he walked... Talk about the lion's den. He, he walked into the lion's den so many times and, and came out the other side and, and did it again and again. I, I want to talk to him about his courage. I want to talk to him about, you know, so many things. I don't question what he wrote. You know, he wrote most of the New Testament. Yeah, I mean, right. You know, most of it's Paul's writing. And some of them from prison. You know, and I am. Um, and you guys have some in common. Paul was caught up too. He had. Yeah. I, I don't yeah, know what you I call caught it. Caught up into the third he, heaven. It was like a near yeah. death experience. Yeah. yeah. So you got a lot of in common. Yeah. Uh, with that. And you know, he saw things and how. I mean, Paul, had, Paul had a near death experience. I mean, that just right that, when he was caught yeah, up. Yeah. yeah. And you know what? He suffered. And it doesn't seem to be fair, but we don't do that with God. You suffer greatly physically yeah. and persecution-wise just for what you've been through. But when Paul was called up, you know, he was, ended up, he, he came, came back and he said, I don't know where he was at. I was in spirit or not. The spirit man was called up right. and given oh, wow. revelations and things that we know like John. Yeah. John was called up. But... Uh, now that you go back and you can look back, I know it's been a while, but so a normal day, it sounds like we're going to have a time if we want to rest by the lake or if we, uh, activities, did you see any activities going on? Oh I yeah, I mean, people do whatever it is they have a notion, as long as it's good, you know. Do you think that people that they don't complete their life purpose here? And they, they're believers, and they go to heaven. They don't live a full life. That purpose in them, 
you think it was an opportunity for oh, that to Oh, absolutely. And um, they, the Bible tells us that we will become we are perfected. The other word for it is purified. We become perfect and we do. We, don't, we, don't, we become like Christ and we have the kind of relationship that Jesus Christ had with God. We ultimately have that kind of relationship, Hard which that, is intimacy. Well, that's powerful because the Bible says we're not just the old man, we're partakers of the divine nature. Yeah. And that will complete. Yeah. But it, wow. I asked Jesus how long it takes and he said, so for some people, it's not a long time. For some people, it's a very long time. And I said, so what do you mean by a long time? And he said, well, I can't, you know, we don't have time up here, so I can't give it to you in a way that you understand. And I said, you mean for some people, it might be thousands or billions of years or something like that? And he said, could be, but it doesn't matter. Whatever it takes, it's going to happen. Everybody's going to be done. eternity. Perfect. Wow. I mean, that that's powerful. And I know it's changed your life and still does. And I cannot believe my friend gets out of the hospital, all he's been through, and thinking he'd be laying back, watching sports or doing something, yeah. he just finished another book. Uh, the Bible says, in old age you shall bear fruit. And uh, it's powerful what you're doing and still doing, my brother. And if you... Uh, could tell a believer that's lost a loved one. And I know if they're not saved, it, it's not good news. But the fact many of us have saved people and friends that do die, and it seems so at loss on this side of life, especially I was talking to Howard about a young friend of mine, 21 years old, he went to bed, and he woke up in the presence of God. But what would you tell people knowing what you've been through. That when Jesus said, or when we're absent from the body, be present with the Lord, what hope could you give from not only scripturally, but what you've experienced in your near-death experience about a loved one leaving this world to the Lord? If that loved one has some faith in Jesus Christ, and, and don't, don't you even think about judging the quality of their faith and how much is, because you don't know That's because powerful. faith... Faith is between us and God, so that we can't judge that. Thank but if they if they know Jesus, they're going to heaven, and so, the bodies are fragile. We're all going to die, and we're all going to suffer, and some of us are going to die in by by increments, and then some of us are going to die suddenly. What? But the point is, we're all going to die. We're all going to suffer, and to get released from this world and to go into the bliss of heaven is so much better that we should um, celebrate people when they die and be thank God um, that they finally made it up to heaven. Now, the other side is if a person has been opposed to God and, and um, fighting God all his life, all you can do is hope and pray that in their dying, because the crutch, yeah. you can be saved even when you're dying. I mean, even when yes. a person is suffering and unconscious, they can still get That's saved. That's right, yeah. Um, yeah. Salvation is nothing we do. We don't save anybody. God saves, Hallelujah. and yes. God, God wants, and I know this for a fact, and the Bible makes it clear, God wants everybody to be saved. You you got to fight God kicking and screaming not to go to heaven. Oh yeah, and Howard, you also just gave a wonderful answer a moment ago. That is, Howard said in the presence of God, some people it could take thousands of years, some a little quicker. But it almost reminds me as children coming home, and sometimes your children got to work out some kinks in their attitude. Yep. Not that God doesn't love them being part of the family, and God's not in a hurry, and we are. When you said that, that hit me that that makes sense. We go to heaven and we've not, you know, the Bible says, uh, you know, confess our sins. Don't just be excited about the relationship. Keep in fellowship. But if we have it, that doesn't mean we're lost, but it does mean God's going to take time to get yep. us where we need to be. Let me, let me give a, an analogy. That's awesome. My uh, daughter went to college, finished in four years, did real well. Um, my son, who lived at home, eight years to finish college, 
he'd drop out in the middle of a semester, he'd not go to classes and get absence. Eight years. I'm a I'm at the college where I'm a professor. He was making me crazy. But and so oh, I didn't, there threat I problems, didn't yeah. threaten him. I didn't kick him out of the house. I didn't get angry with him. I just keep encouraging him to keep trying. Eight years, and you know what? He's got a great career. He does really well. That's good. Um, all due to what he learned in school. Um, he's a techie. He works for really? um, head, head of the technology for a professional basketball team in Florida. I mean, he's got a real high paying job. Wow. All the stuff he learned in college. And, uh, well, you you know, said and, and, and he made me nuts. <laughs> Eight years to do four, a four year degree, you know? So we can sometimes, not literally, but drive God crazy because oh, yeah. of our own will that's yeah. learning to, like Jesus, not my will, you will be done. That really answered a lot of questions for people when you said that God may take a thousand, a million years, it may be quicker, but God's still working on us. Even yeah. when we leave this world, we're, we're not that perfect man. We're in heaven. I think that's hope for people because... You know, people, people, um, I hear people talk about one of those, uh, you know, um, foxhole conversions. Yeah. yeah. And I've heard people talk yeah. about their foxhole conversions. Yeah, you know, this is when people are in combat and they all of a sudden never prayed in their life and start praying to God and asking yeah. God to save his life. Uh, you know, that's that's just as valid as if you went to Sunday school all your life and went to church every Sunday for the rest of your life. You know, God just wants us to turn to God. That's all it is. That's beautiful. You know, something else that comes to my mind when I was talking. That why do people make salvation difficult? Yeah. I think yeah. salvation's easy, but working it out with yeah. this human will, but we can't confuse the two, make salvation almost a works, because all our righteousness are filthy rags. Well, uh, if you could leave a last word with someone, hard one day, I will be Alex, you will be no more as we know it in this world. The curtains will be pulled, we're out of here. and. That's not too long for now. Life is like a vapor. You get one shot yeah. in this short life. Yeah. Not to make a deal with God, not to tell God how good you're going to be, but to really come to Christ. And what one thing I really was blessed. God made it so simple to you, Howard. He didn't tell you to do a list of do's and don'ts. Yeah, right. It was just simple. And salvation's not difficult. Now, understand, once you're saved, it's like a... Giving birth to a child, that's not the difficult thing, but getting that yeah. child. Yeah, good, a really good analogy. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah, and that's understandable, but don't make salvation so difficult. Yeah. And, and even when Howard, I knew when I asked Howard in, I had studied for years, I have read, I read his story, others, and I knew many things that if a person's just faking it or making up a story of being used to the devil, yeah. it's not true. And there are certain things you can know from scripture. Howard's just spoken a lot of things. Read his books, watch his testimony. The unique thing, his life lines up with scripture. And yes, there's things you do 24 hours a day, like the chosen, Jesus had to do something every second when he's here in the human body. And Howard went through some of those experiences, but nothing, you know, all complimented scripture, not anti-scripture. So what would you do with Jesus? I hope you come to the place that you don't make it too difficult, the devil's a liar. Call upon the name of Jesus. Amen, Christ. amen. Realize that Jesus, not some church denomination where I pastor or some cousin, but call upon the name Jesus Christ. Yeah. The one who gave his life on the cross. And don't think he's hit, got a big stick in his hand. Whosoever will may come. Don't miss heaven by 18 inches, having it all up here. Howard had that up there. And it made him, I don't know, bitter against God because of bad teaching by a minister or two. And don't trip over what somebody else said. Whosoever will may come. God is not willing that one person would perish and go to hell, but that all would come to repentance. What must you do to be saved? As simple as A, B, C. Yeah. A myth. Yeah. 
When the Bible says something, you should pay attention. When it says it twice, you need to sit up and pay more attention. Yes. Four times, four times in the Bible it says, anyone who calls upon the name wow. of the Lord shall be saved. And as you've been saying, you call upon the name of Jesus and guess what? He hears you, he gets it. Wait, it's that simple. You, that's it simple. Is. You just you the just on the cross. That's all I did. You sit back, no expectations, no anticipation. Just wait upon the Lord, and He will be there. Yeah, you know, I, I love that because God didn't make salvation difficult. What's the old saying? Uh, theologians, uh, the the water's so deep, he can, uh, with babies you can dabble in it, but theologians can drown in it. <laughs> but don't miss heaven by 10 inches. How simple as childlike faith. Remember the name Jesus. Thank you for joining us here at End Time Prophecy. And just remember Romans 5, 5. The love of God is shed abroad by the Holy Spirit within us. So don't hold back, but let the Spirit flow through you. And remember, God loves you and so do we. And let me finish this thought too. Salvation's as simple as ABC. God didn't make salvation so hard that only the highfalutin could understand it, but he put it on the bottom shelf, simple as a childlike faith. Admit and admit that you're a sinner. You don't have it all together. And then believe. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and the sea. Confess in your heart. Jesus stands at the door and knocks. And if you open that door, allow the presence of God to come in your life by trusting Jesus and they'll get your name written in the book of life. And someday, when it looks like it's all these big things, do not despise the day of small things. God is a God of salvation. Yeah. And he loves all of us. He loves us so much, he gives us a free will. He's already decided he's not willing to any should perish. But you must agree with him. It's almost like a wedding. The spiritual spouse said, I do. But you've got to say, I do also. Simple as ABC, I hope to see you in heaven because of Jesus. Yeah. God bless you.